Hey, so I had an interesting conversation with a client, a relatively new one, um, who had just gotten an earful from a person at the DDS. Supposedly, it was like a third level manager. Uh, not sure how and why that would happen. But anyway, um, so this new client shared with me the statements that this alleged DDS manager had said to uh, the client. Um, and it was essentially saying, and this, by the way, this case has been around um, before I got involved, like very recently, uh, probably seven months already, eight months on initial. And we have another video about, I mean, you've been hearing about the delays if you're not experiencing them yourself. Um, there is a bad shortage of staffers. But in any event, this DDS employee um, tells the client that there is no point in having an attorney, an attorney on your case. They don't do anything and they have some merit when they make arguments at an ALJ hearing. But other than that, they don't do anything. So why would you retain one um, so that if you prevail, there's going to be a fee potentially going to them? So, of course, you know, I got my short hairs in a bunch because I happen to be one of the attorneys that works like a dog um, on initial, on recon, even before we apply. Like, yes, I take them before application. Yes, I do the application. Yes, I do them on initial. Yes, I do the appeal for reconsideration if need be. Um, and then I do reconsideration and beyond. So it really burned me up because I know, I've heard this before. And my colleagues have heard it and we've discussed it. Um, there is a handful of rogue employees um, across the nation at the federal agency that do tell people, and this is, by the way, at the DDS, but also, I believe, at the field offices at times. Um, and I don't know, some of them clearly have chips on their shoulder, but sometimes I think they might not have a lot of experience, um, perhaps with the kind of attorneys that do things like some of us do, that this is this is our profession. We're not just dabbling like some law practices or factory volume based companies do um, who don't do your application, who don't advise you throughout the course of the function report and the work history report. So they might just see the ones that don't do squat. And I I definitely agree that if you're going to hire one of those, you may as well not hire one at all. But if you are if you are vetting your professional, um, you either know them by reputation that they do all these things. Um, and by the way, working, you know, drafting all of the, the documents that go in, which is what some of us do, is not the only thing to be done on an informal recon. It's extremely important though, because claimants pro se tend to screw up their function reports and their work history reports, reports uh, very regularly, if not almost always. So that might be one thing you would want to ask when you are seeking representation. Um, obviously, if you are, if you have a vocationally weak case, you might beggars might might <laughs> beggars can't be choosers, as they say. Um, you'll be lucky to get any representation. But again, if the if the if the represent representing party isn't going to be doing anything, like if they're going to have you do everything. Um, and submit it yourself and they don't do, uh, you know, attorney review or advocate review and make sure there's not a single bad word in there that could be misinterpreted. Um, I'm not sure they're worth having either. <laughs> um, it depends if they have something else up their sleeve. I, I don't really know, but other things that I think a representative who's doing the top job that you deserve would be doing is advising you um, based on your alleged impairments, what kind of treatment you should be pursuing? You know, what, what kind of specialist should you be looking for um, and going to? Do you need updated MRIs? Do you, um, should you inquire about physical therapy or other forms of um, pain management? You know, a lot of times it takes, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, I don't want to say it's like a coaching thing, but sometimes you have to really pull people by the hand um, to get them to activate on their own behalf for the, the things that only they can do. 
it can be getting them to report when they do go to a doctor because otherwise they keep it under their hat. Some people just don't naturally share it to the representative. Some representatives have no methodology for, for gaining that information. So the client doesn't know what to do. If they call, they're not going to get a call back. Um, so you might want to inquire if there's a, a portal that the attorney or the non-attorney rep uses to allow you to you know, message them when you go to a doctor, um, upload a document that, you know, has the requisite information about a new doctor or a new provider. Do they have those kind of things? Do they have places where you can upload anything you happen to come across that you think might be important you want them to take a look at? Um, do they have a message system where you can message them? You know, not always are you going to be able to grab some on the phone. People are working, you know, I don't want to say 24 seven, but some of us practically, but you want to at least have a, therefore a message system and an and or a texting system as well as voicemail. Um, do they use Zoom and have Zoom meetings when needed? Do they, uh, or, do they or do they limit it to phone, which is fine. Um, for some of us, we think Zoom or MS Teams is a great way to have a little face-to-face -face contact so we can um, feel a little more joint and teamwork related. Um, I, I think it does help personally, but... Um, you know, if you are concerned that you don't want or you've been told, you know, there's nothing an advocate or an attorney rep can do for you on initial and recon, it is so untrue. And frankly, I really think the staffers that are saying that could probably be fired for saying that. Um, they're basically telling someone in a legal system, you don't need <laughs> you, you don't need a lawyer, you don't need help. Um, now, if you're if you're trained in this stuff, then maybe you don't need to help. Sure, certainly. But if you haven't been and you don't know all those nuances, my guess is, I mean, short of being extremely high level, listing level, you know, one of the one of the ones that would win, regardless, as long as you're going to all the doctors, you should be. That's a different story. But that's that's the vast minority, guys. The vast minority. Um, when you look at what was the recent chart they had up on initial. I think it's, um, was it six, something like 60 or 72%, no, 68%, um, almost 70% then overall in the country. So I'm sure it varies a little bit in different pockets. Um, lose on initial. What they don't tell you is, okay, so you have the, the, 20 something percent that win on initial or 30 something percent. Uh, what percentage of those have representation, at, you know, that versus not representation? The SSA doesn't give us that. I'm not sure they want us to have that because you do see a lot of um, circumvention, attempts to circumvent the attorney. Um, I know that if there's an attorney involved who pays attention, the staffers tend to pay attention more, follow the rules more. You know, in th technically, I do not believe they're supposed to be calling you if you have a representative. They're supposed to be communicating through the representative. That's why you hired them. Um, with my clients, I'm like, you don't speak to anybody. You let it go to voicemail. That's what voicemail is for. Who answers the phone anyway? Unless you see the caller ID, it's your, it's your family or a close friend. Um, so... We have it where you never pick up the phone. You let it go to voicemail and then shoot the voicemail over to me or record the name um, and the extension phone number of the staff or wherever they're at. And I do the calling back for sure. Um, there are there has been there has been trickery. And that's not what I'm gonna have my clients going through. I mean, the whole point of hiring somebody is to relieve you of that obligation and the stress associated with it. And the fear of making a grave error because you misunderstand something and you get led by the nose to provide an answer that doesn't really reflect your realities. So in any event, um, whether you have a representative or not, um, or you're choosing to get one, you want one. There's a lot of better. I mean, you're not they're not going to sit there and give you a seminar for an hour, but you can say, do you um gather my information and file the application. Do you work with me with the function report information? Do you work with me on the work history report and any other reports? Um, am I submitting the things or are you? Uh, do you have a communication system where if I need to get you information, 
um, I can shoot it up there without having to like maybe give it to a secretary and hope it gets in the file, you know, um, all sorts of questions like that. I mean, they're not, it's not going to take long for them to answer. They know what their, their policies are and what their practices are. I do have many colleagues that don't work on those things and they're real, they're, they're, they're good, but at that level, maybe they're not their weight in gold. Um, maybe it's not until hearing. I know some colleagues that won't even take a case until, um, it's heading to hearing and there are inferences about that. Um, maybe they don't know how to work up a case prior to that. Maybe they're not into gathering additional evidence, um, turning every stone, if you will, to find the more unusual areas where you can find evidence on initial and reconsideration. Um, you know, the theory is that sometimes they just want that because they know you have a bigger chance of losing without them. And then you'll come to them. And by then the case has aged. And as you know, it's 25% of back benefits. There is a $7,200 cap. So I'd say by and large, for the most part, most people do not make anything close to a, a reasonable phase, but that's what, that's what sets apart the people who are professionals in the field and do it because it is their field. It is their, I don't want to say passion. That's such an overused word, but there's some of us that eat it, breathe it, sleep it. And some people just tack it onto an existing practice. And it makes a big difference. I think what you're getting into, but in any event, you know, you, you can find out how much they do. Just ask them. Because if they tell you they're going to help you work on the function report and then they don't, that's big. <laughs> um, I don't think they would do that. Then again, I could be surprised. Anyway, just wanted to let you know when I when I heard about what this person was telling my person, my person had already been through one attorney and however that got separated, I don't know um, if there was a falling out or what happened, but Apparently the person wanted another representative and here I am and I'm getting all this word about how the staffers are saying, you don't need a representative. Da, da, da. Well, she hasn't won yet. So are you sure about that? <laughs> Just curious. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.